This year, it's been easy to focus on the unrest and uncertainty. Where do we turn? Let her go! Who do we look to? It's what you stand for! It can be hard to find answers. And the people of Kenosha, Wisconsin can tell you that. But religious leaders say faith can be a source of hope. This week, we're talking religion. The role it plays in society. The message is a universal message. And what issues it faces in the most challenging of years. This is The Race. Welcome to The Race, I'm Chris Stewart. The scars of unrest are still clear here in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And as much of America feels the pain and frustration fueled by the challenges of divisiveness and uncertainty, religious leaders say faith can power us forward. Bible speaks to, I was in prison and you visited me. I was hungry and you, and you fed me. And I was a stranger and you housed me. I think the calling to ministry has always been a call to serve a community and not just a community that meets at a building on whatever day the community worships. Reverend Dr. Monica Cummings doesn't have to look far to see the damage left by the protests turned violent after the police shooting of Jacob Blake. Our church shares a property line with the car dealership that was destroyed by fire. Flames spared this church. In Kenosha, it's easy to see what wasn't. Pastor Eric Carlson sees why. The anger that produced these demonstrations doesn't come from a vacuum. It comes from problems in our society dating back, in some cases, hundreds of years that we have not addressed. As a Unitarian Universalist minister, his sermons are often about bringing diverse ideas together. We're not as much united by any specific idea of God as much as we are united around a commitment to positive social change and to the idea that, you know, we are charged with bringing love into this world. A faith fit for a city wounded by issues of race and equality. The church can play a role and having a partnership with the police department in terms of bringing the community and the police together. The real problem is you don't see. It's a challenge how to interact with someone who represents a group of people who have historically oppressed you, who have historically traumatized you. Police have trauma as well. There's no way that they can do the job that they do day in and day out without their mental health suffering. Society has many views on how to police, protest, and pray. And to this church, diversity and race and viewpoints are welcome in finding a path beyond the heartbreak. We don't like destruction of property, but we understand and appreciate the pain that it comes from and that we would rather lose our building and 100 buildings than another life to police violence. This pandemic has forced us to make so many changes in our lives. And Usher Qureshi is taking a closer look at how coronavirus is impacting the ways people observe their faith. Ready or not, the intersection of machines and religion is already happening in real life. In Japan, monks at an ancient temple hear sermons from a robot avatar of the Buddhist goddess of mercy. In India, an automaton performs one of Hinduism's most sacred rituals. And in Germany, a robot gives blessings to thousands of Protestants. You could punch in the language, for example, in which you would request a blessing. Some are now asking whether the next step is an artificially intelligent spiritual leader and whether counsel from AI could ever replace the guidance of a human cleric. I think that's a really important question that we need to wrestle with just as we're also wrestling with you know, the hypothetical possibility of encountering intelligent life from other planets. But what about right now? 
The pandemic has forced millions around the world out of their churches, temples, synagogues and mosques into virtual congregations. We've been recording our sermons, we've been posting them online, Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. A lot of other Islamic centers are doing the same, trying to keep the community engaged digitally. Teresa Berger, a professor of Catholic theology at the Yale University Divinity School, argues that whether virtually or in person, the physicality of being present remains. And rather than being disembodied, the technology actually allows more connectivity in some cases, such as using the chat feature. In this particular digitally mediated community, people talked to each other throughout the service much more than we might do in a brick and mortar sanctuary. In recent years, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has suggested the social network could address declining church attendance offering the same sense of community traditionally found in brick and mortar houses of worship. Is this about creating profit for Facebook or is this about truly um, ministering to the spiritual needs of people? Trying to keep those things separate would be very difficult. Just how exactly technology will alter manners of worship, say experts, will undoubtedly continue to evolve. I'm sure we're going to see some dramatic transformations in the future. For the race, I'm Usher Qureshi. Financial losses are not just limited to businesses or families. Alexa Liako shows us how some religious institutions are being pushed to the point of bankruptcy. Bless you all. How y'all doing this morning? Mm -hmm. This line is a familiar sight to Pastor Bernard Taylor. Make sure you give them some water too. Families in need know when they come to this Brooklyn church, They'll be met with open arms. It's for you. You with it. And met with a helping hand. It means a lot. A lot. A whole lot for the community. All because this church does a whole lot for its neighbors. We got chicken, we got steak, we got franks. We feed up to 105,000 people per year, and the number quite naturally is going to grow due to the pandemic. More people need fresh food, school supplies, and clothing than ever before, and the Open Door Church of God in Christ provides it all. Whether it's rain, sun, hail, snowstorm, we're here. But the pandemic is just as threatening to the church as it is to the community. Some people have lost their homes. Some people can't make ends meet, and some people are really struggling. And if they're struggling, we struggle because it's a trickle down effect. And so if they're not receiving, then they can't give. The empty pews, grace and peace be unto you, often translate into near empty collection baskets, leaving the church's staff and its programs in a tough spot. There's been many times that I said, well, I don't know what we're going to do. The business behind many churches in the U.S. is in for a long recovery. The Barna Group found one in three people who regularly attended church have stopped watching online services. And a leader with LifeWay Research, a group studying churches, estimates 5% of churches will close permanently before the end of the year because of COVID-19, a number five times higher than typical yearly closures. I had to put in $5,000 of my own personal money at one time just to see the payroll get taken care of. And I don't look for it back. I give it from my heart. And whatever I have to do, I give my last. To make sure this church could survive, a group called Churches Helping Churches also got involved, donating $3,000 to this church and others across the nation who offer their community much more than a house of worship. I'm not working, so I'm glad that I can come here. Pastor Taylor fears if his church can't serve the community, they will lose something greater than a place to gather. What is really at stake here? Well, what's at stake is people lose hope and we don't want people to lose hope. But he has a plan to make sure his business of helping others stays in business. We have to make sure that we do three things. Number one, we have to adjust, have services coming in your living room, in your man cave. We have to adapt okay. and then we can overcome. Adapting to a life of coming together while staying apart. It's a new normal for all of us. To overcome the hunger in the community in both body and soul. Help me stay together. Together we'll make it. We'll get through it together. For The Race, I'm Alexa Liako. Research shows that congregations are dwindling as fewer younger Americans are going to church. How some are looking to battle that decline. 